Today we're talking about flushing. It's a controversial topic where you manipulate your nutrient feed slightly in order to achieve certain results. Some people say yes, others say no, but we're going to dive in with a little bit of our own experiences today. I'm joined by Luke. Luke, thanks so much for, for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, guys. It's always an absolute pleasure. Let's dive right in today for the listeners. Uh, what exactly is flushing? Uh, flushing is the practice of sort of giving your plants uh, only water for a period of time before harvesting. Um, you know, it's said to, well, it does actually reduce uh, and remove excess nutrients. Um, it's said to improve the uh, smoothness of the smoke and uh, flavor of the buds. Uh, but I think we'll just dive into a little bit more on that uh, as we as we go along here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's a it's a it's a task that uh, does take a bit of time. It's not something that can happen Im immediately. Uh, so yeah, there are a, current, a couple of misconceptions about it, and then also there's varying different results. I think a lot of the time dependent on dependent on your strain. But uh, tell me a little bit as to why there's a bit of uh, controversy around the around the subject of of flushing. I suppose recently there were some studies uh, done that said you know that flushing isn't necessarily uh, needed. It doesn't affect the smoke. It doesn't affect the overall result or or high. You know, and I, I think a lot of these are also up to interpretation, and you have to tinker around and find what what works for you and what's good for you you know i think personally myself i do love to flush but i also at the same time feel that you can't just you know take a whole bunch of uh, fresh water flush the your medium that you're growing in completely out of nutrition and then expect to try and feed fresh water with no, nothing in it and hope your plant uh, you know reacts fine to that uh, it still needs nutrition to to end off its cycle and end its life off, you know. So I think it's very important to understand uh, flushing in, in a sense of, of, for me, is is just reducing your, your nutrition input uh, quite exponentially and maybe even your lighting as well. Yeah, over a period of time, that's the, that's the main thing. Uh, look, we, the yeah. way we're referring to, to flushing today is basically to try and have a controlled end of your of your grow environment and to sort of, you know, as the season starts to change outdoors or uh, as you're kind of mimicking a season change indoors, you want to kind of get those environmentals to give the plant as natural of a finish as possible. And uh, in, in my mind, if it's as natural as possible, it's going to, it's going to present you with the maximum that 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 strain can be it color wise or potentially terpene wise and just give you a better a better well-rounded product so uh, luke tell me a little bit about uh, uh, you know uh, some of the visual uh, things that you would see during a a, a flushing period and uh, is it gradual or does it uh, kind of happen quite quickly uh, as to depending on i suppose the substrate that you're growing in yeah, I uh, look like the visuals uh, are definitely there. I like to think of uh, starting the flushing process as you know, kind of sending your your plant into the finish of its flower autumn, call it that. You know, so bringing uh, lessening your nutrients exponentially through it. Uh, you know, over a two week period, will introduce some some cool colors, whether it be your red hues, maroon hues, purple hues. Um, you'll even start to see that happen in the bud as well. Some of the factors that can contribute not only with, with flushing to, to colors and cannabis can be the temperatures, you know. So then again, trying to mimic autumn, season ending, it's going colder. Um, that can really introduce some some really cool colors and flushing does uh, implement and it and happens quite quite quickly as well. You'll notice it. Yeah, I think uh, for for bag appeal, it's it's important, you know, and also to have the most natural expression of the of the specific strain. If you see beautiful colors, sort of, you know, advertised in a specific pack shot, you're going to want to try and achieve those same colors yourself. And by letting the plant, I think, end off naturally and consume what's what's available, and kind of be, be told that its life is coming to an end, rather than being fed to the maximum the whole time. And I mean, if you're doing it uh, at a cost saving point of view, it kind of makes more financial sense to also lay back a bit. You know, if you're using costly nutrients, why waste them when it may not be necessary at the end of the day? 
but uh, Luke, I suppose for for newbies who are going to be hearing this the, these sort of terminologies for the first time, or for people who haven't tried it yet, what are some what what would you sort of say to someone they should be cautious about when uh, when when kind of uh, if they were to ask you a couple of questions related to flushing? I would say if you you know if you're following a strict nutrient schedule, um, bottled nutrient, whether it be a salt based or semi organic. Uh, organic nutrients follow the recipes they have on there the bottles and and you know whatever you're using usually come with a schedule and you'll see that they gradually scale it down they don't cut it out completely you know if you don't do that uh you can fall into some some problems remember we're starting the flushing process sort of two weeks prior to harvest that's still two weeks of of growing time so be careful not to completely flush your medium and your feeding water have no nutrition in it because that could uh, cause issues at the end of the day with an organic grow that you've been dry mending and your last feeding was uh, you know four weeks back just carry on feeding feeding water um, and it should gradually you know see see the colors and start to to flush out uh, sort of by itself it is a, a living or uh, living soil so there you don't need to do much except uh just feed it water. <laughs> yeah, I think there's always slightly more risk on uh, sort of if you may be doing a hydroponic grow, you need to be more strict to your ske schedule. As organic growers know, you kind of, uh, the plot is a lot more sort of leeway to, to play around. But, uh, you know, when you start to see differentiating hues across a sort of a big canopy, it really does add to the the visual striking appeal, you know, if you, if you go into it, uh, if you go into it with a long enough time, like like Luke's been saying, you can't just jump into it and think it's going to happen immediately. You might shock your plants and then that might, those last two weeks, you're going to get a lot of growth. You know, the plants are going to swell up and you don't really want to negatively affect that either. But, uh, you know, uh, is flushing really necessary for, for all plants? If you're not going to, you know, if you, or, or does it depend entirely on the on the individual, what they're trying to achieve? I once again, you know, it's your personal opinions and preferences and what you believe on on flushing. Um, but for me personally, I think it is necessary and it just helps you get the most out of that plant and have its, you know, natural expressions uh towards the end of its its life cycle and its flower cycle. And you know, that's when you I believe that you've maximized uh everything that you could possibly get out of out of that plant and out of your your season on it yeah i think when you get to see these beautiful colors at the end of the grow it really gives you that sense of things are coming to an end uh you know you can start to see the final expression that you've been working towards for months and to see a plant go from completely green to the sort of deep purpley kind of kind of color it really does uh, look look cool. <laughs> We've just been working with this plat uh, this uh, the platinum gorilla and our uh, and uh, the first time running the rainbow berries, which is is quite popular here in South Africa. And we've seen some amazing uh, some amazing fade, sort of following a gradual drop off. We're going to release some content on that soon, which I'm pretty excited about. But Luke, any any final thoughts uh, to close the episode off? Yeah, and just. Uh... You know, end off those ladies uh, how they should be ending off. Um, if you want to get some colors, you know, um, do your flushes. Don't cut it out completely. Follow your schedules. Um, they are they are your guide um, through it. And if you do have any questions, please comment down below. We'll be happy to answer them. Amazing. So, guys, a lot of this is, uh, you know, a lot of the time we'll bring you these episodes. We're kind of working on maybe something similar at the time. And a lot of the stuff uh, is is our personal practical opinion. You know, there's multiple methods. It's up to you at the end of the day. We just try to bring you sort of, uh, you know, as current information as possible. So we hope you enjoyed the show. Please remember to like and subscribe. Until next time, guys. Peace. Peace.